Welcome to ECE 320 Electronics 1, lecture number 23, using a MOSFET as a switch. Now a MOSFET can operate in three different modes. Off, where the gate voltage is less than the turn-on voltage, in which case there is no current flow. The ohmic region, that's where we use it as a switch. When this is 5 volts, this will be a resistor, say 0.1 ohm. And the saturated region, that's where the current is controlled by the voltage. The saturated region we use in analog electronics. In digital electronics, we just use this as a switch. Again, we're doing the, bo the Boolean on-off, uh, 0 volts off, 5 volts, 0.1 ohm. Uh, as an example of how to do that, suppose I want to turn on and off an LED. In that case, first I have to find the LED that I want. Um, here I just picked a red LED. The forward voltage is 2 volts at 20 milliamps, and the resistance that I need is 150 ohms. I want to push 20 milliamps through this LED. In that case, I'm going to use the MOSFET as a switch, where this either turns on or off. When this is 0 volts, it's off. When it's 5 volts, I want 150 ohms between the power supply and ground. So the first step is pick your favorite MOSFET. If you go to DigiKey, they've got 22,000 results in 2019. Uh, the last lecture, there were 50 or 91,000 different MOSFETs as of 2020. What I'm looking for is a MOSFET that can handle 20 milliamps and 5 volts. So picking one, so end channel, through hole, in stock, uh, currents up to 200 milliamps, I get a more manageable list. And then picking one, here's what I pick kind of arbitrarily. This is a 42 cent MOSFET in bulk at 6 cents and has an on resistance of 5 ohms. What I need to find is the turn on voltage in case of N. The data sheets will give me the turn on voltage, which will be on the second page. In terms of the max, <coughs> max VDS, that's right here, this will handle up to 60 volts, drain to source, handle up to 20 volts, gate to source. I'm only using 5 volts, so that's plenty good. The current it can handle is up to 115 milliamps. I only need 20 milliamps, so again, this is fine. That's continuous. If I pulse it, like have a strobe light, I can do up to 800 milliamps. And also notice on the diagrams, there's a diode right here. That's the flyback diode. They kind of assume when they built this that you're going to be using an inductive load. That flyback diode helps protect the MOSFET. What this also means is you got to watch the direction. For NPN transistors, oftentimes you can put them in backwards and it still works. MOSFETs, you can't do that. If I put this in backwards, that diode will short out the MOSFET. It'll always be on. So I've got to make sure I use it correctly. If we go to page two of the data sheets, this will tell you where the, or what the resistance is under different conditions. If I pick one of these conditions, similar to how I'll be using it, at 5 volts, 50 milliamps, only need 20 milliamps, but they'll be close. The resistance is right around 1.7 ohms, nominal. That tells me case of N. This is the ohmic region. Again, kind of the ohms tells you ohmic. I know IDS is 50 milliamps. I know VGS is 5 volts. Else from the data sheets, I can find out that the turn on voltage is 2 volts. VDS is I times R. 50 milliamps at 1.7 ohms gives you VDS. Uh, solving, I get case of N is 0 0.19, 0 0.1989 uh, amps per volt squared. Now I can analyze the circuit. When this is 1.7 ohms turned on, I want the total to be 150 ohms, so R sub D should be 148.3 ohms. Uh, give or take 5% because we have 5% resistors in lab. And now I can start analyzing it. If the gate voltage is zero, it's turned off, that's easy. When it's turned on, I've got two equations, two unknowns. The easy way to solve it is if the input is 5 volts, assume this is 1.7 ohms, and you got the answer. If you want to be a little bit more accurate, I need two equations, two unknowns. One equation is the MOSFET equation. I have two unknowns, VDS and IDS. They're related by this equation in the ohmic region. I have a second equation, this circuit. I have five 
uh, or a BDS, is 5 minus 2, which is 3, minus I times R. That's 148.3 ohms. If I solve these two equations, two unknowns, I get two solutions. The first solution is the correct one. Second solution comes from here. If I draw the load line, it'll intersect this parabola twice. The one on the left is the one I want. The solution on the right, the higher voltage, is the invalid solution. That's where I'm actually saturated. So for these two solutions, that's the correct answer, 0 0.0037 volts. Uh, that tells me the voltage. Once I know the voltage, I can find the current. And once I find the current, I can find the resistance. This isn't actually 1.7 ohms. It's actually 1.6854 ohms under these operating conditions. And note that the great thing about MOSFETs is they work for any load. It doesn't have to be just an LED. Any load that needs less than 150 milliamps, the capability of this MOSFET, will work. So as long as the 1.7 ohms is small relative to your load, um, and as long as the voltage is less than the 60 volts, that's the maximum for the MOSFET, this MOSFET will work fine. Oh, one other thing to note, this resistor right here, RG, that's kind of optional. MOSFETs hold a charge. This is a capacitor. If I charge this to 5 volts and let it go, it'll hold that volt and stay on. If I ground it, it'll hold that voltage and stay off. What this resistor does is if I apply a voltage and walk away, that'll discharge it down to zero. So the default in this case is off. This also helps you protect you from static. If there's a little bit of static on the line, this will keep on bleeding off the static charge so voltage doesn't build up. If the gate voltage ever becomes more than 20 volts, it'll burn out the MOSFET. Again, MOSFETs are sensitive to static. Uh, that's why we don't use them in lab. If you can connect the gate to the source through one meg resistor, that helps discharge the capacitor and make it a little bit more uh, robust. One other thing to note about MOSFETs is the on time and off time. MOSFETs are extremely fast. There is a capacitor that's inherent with MOSFETs. This guy right here is the symbol for a capacitor. I've got the gate, I've got the substrate. Two charges across an insulator makes a capacitor. So the capacitance for a MOSFET is small, but it is there. Uh, for the one we looked at, it's 20 picofarads, gate to source, 11 picofarads, drain to source. What that means is the switching time isn't zero. It takes a little bit of time to charge and discharge a capacitor. Uh, for example, if I have 150 ohms at 11 picofarads, the RC time constant is 1.6 nanoseconds. The voltage will rise up exponentially as e to the minus t over RC. If I look at the 2% settling time, 2% uh, is kind of common because the log of 0.02 is minus 4. It's actually minus 3.97, about minus 4. So the settling time is just four time constants. If, one of our, or if RC is 1.6 nanoseconds, then it'll take about 6.6 .6 nanoseconds to reach steady state. Meaning the MOSFETs can't turn on and off arbitrarily fast, but this is going to be on the order of you know, beyond 100 megahertz for this MOSFET. If I want to have a switch capable of more current, just use a different MOSFET. For example, if I go back to DigiKey and search, here's a MOSFET that's capable of 8 amps and 500 volts. The on resistance is 0.65 ohms, and it costs $1.51 in quantities of 1, 60 cents in quantities of 2,000. Uh, going to the data sheet, again, what I care about is here's the on resistance, 0.65 ohms. The turn on voltage is actually called cutoff voltage for this one. That's BGS off. It's between 3 and 5 volts. So this MOSFET will really need 10 volts to turn it on. The voltage capability, it'll handle up to 500 volts. Uh, again, complete overkill. And the capacitance is 600 picofarads. Again, it's not zero. Very, very small, but not zero. That limits the maximum frequency the MOSFET can operate at. So take that previous circuit and use this MOSFET instead. And make the input 10 volts for on, 0 volts for off. 
I can now handle up to 600 volts turning on and off, and when it turns on, it'll be 0.6 ohms. So that's using a MOSFET as a switch. They're actually extremely easy to use. It's kind of binary, either infinity ohms or something small like 1 ohm. And that's lecture number 23, using a MOSFET as a switch.